Hi, welcome to my studio. My name's Kerry Waltz and I share tips, tools, and techniques for the artist in you. And today is a focus on the behind the scenes of artists and how they continually learn. I'm a perpetual student and I hope all of you are too. What I'm about to explore next is pastels. I'm going to put away my watercolors for a bit, at least for a few days, and focus on learning from Pastel Live, an online event that I've attended last year. And I, I learned so much from that experience. And I think in three days, I painted 16 paintings. And most of them, you know, were, well, eight by 10 was probably the average. But I worked so hard on learning and trying to do the demos with the instructors as quickly as I could. And I had them all drawn out ahead of time and in order. So I had that ready. But I didn't realize when I finished that experience and put my pastels up for a little while that um, I had no desire to get them out for a very long time. I only probably touched pastels two times this past year. And I don't want that to happen this year. I want to be able to really listen and learn and absorb as much as possible. But last year, I was so focused on completing the demos that I can look at them and probably tell you or probably figure out some of the things that I did, but I took no actual notes on um, techniques and things to remember. And I want to do a different uh, way of, of learning this year that I hope will benefit me. And uh, some, of my, some of my friends are also uh, going to participate in this and we're going to watch the first day tomorrow together. And that's another reason why I did what I did is because when I'm with people and I get distracted, I still want to learn, but I don't want to get frustrated and I don't want to get burned out. And by doing this preliminary notebook that I'm going to share with you, oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I think this will be a great way for me, not only to remember what I did each day and the artists that taught, but a way that I can then take it and use it as a reference for when I help others. So um, I'm going to show you what I made. It took me a few more hours than I expected it to because I got a little more involved than I thought I would. But stick with me and please uh, give me a thumbs up if there's anything here that you can relate to. If you get burned out, if you feel like a sponge that's just totally saturated and you can't stand another thing. I don't, you know, I don't want that for you. I don't want that for me. And uh, see what I did and see if it'll help you. My goal for this notebook was to organize it by days in the order that the presentations are made. I wanted each presentation to have a thumbnail, the artist's name, what they're focusing on, and the time of their event, as well as some lines drawn for uh, note-taking so my notes will be fairly neat. And then, I don't know if you can see this, but it is a pencil outline of the size of small painting that I'm going to do. Today, on Thursday starts, um, I have each of the presenters highlighted, and I already have a card that will fit each of their days, and I have a small thumbnail drawn for each of them. I'm not sure if I'm going to do the portrait. I made a larger picture for that, but just by doing this alone, drawing the thumbnail, leaving space for notes, having um, a place already reserved for the small painting, this has already gotten me excited about the event. This is an example of one of the gouache paintings that I did, and I touched it up with the new pastel, sprayed it with Spectrafix, glued it in, and why use gouache? You're probably saying, this is Pastel Live. Why in the world are you using gouache? Well, if I did this whole thing in pastel, every time I shut uh, the notebook that I would make a big mess and eventually be smeared. So I just wanted the effects of the composition and I'm going to take my notes over here so I'm not that concerned that it is all in pastel. I'm going to make it my own. One other thing I needed to do is this notebook has perforated edges all along here and every time I turned the page I felt that uh oh it's going to get a little over bent and it's going to tear so I went back and reinforced with clear tape all the backs so I got excited about this option and did the first three that are on beginner day and 
Uh, this one had some awesome little notes, which I won't spend much time on because they're not mine. I just love the purple flowers that she did. And uh, color notes are always good. This particular one, this is the uh, gessoed paper. And on the back, I have day one, 615, Michael Freeman, still life, apples. I noticed on his that the background was very dark. So I went ahead with my watercolors and I painted in a very dark background. So when... When I come back with gouache and color on this, then I'm going to use my new pastels, which are right over here. I'm not going to pull out, pull them out. Whoops, so sorry. Um, once the gouache dries, which it dries really fast, then I'm going to use touches of pastel to um, give it a little more pastel look. But it won't be too messy because I'm going to also seal it with Spectrafix, which will affect the overall feel of it a certain extent. But then I'll glue this in, and I'll have my notes, so that I'll be able to remember what was done. Um, I have all of the drawings, preliminary drawings done, of the, that, that had a bluish and, and purple background, so I went ahead and hit that with watercolor. Uh, Rita Kirkman has a quinacridone gold, uh, Nico Azo gold on hers. So if I knew something of that nature, I went ahead and put it on there. But this is just watercolor paper with, um, with the sketch. And they're all in order according to what day. And I have a space drawn uh, for each painting. So if you're still with me, you know I'm a little nuts about uh, <laughs> planning and, and getting ready for things. And I'll let you know how it goes. I'll video uh, another segment of this after the fact and tell you if this time was worth it. I just really hope that my time in preparation will allow me a chance to uh, relax a little bit more and enjoy the event. One of the reasons why I am working so small is each demo is only one hour long. And I know if, if I was trying to work a larger size like I did last year, that I would just frustrate myself trying to get even part of it done before I had to move on to the next one. And uh, I just, <laughs> just didn't want the mess of all the pastels all over the table and trying to put uh, a set of pastels up for one painting and then save it for the next one. And I just didn't want to do that. So give me a thumbs up if anything, of, if any of this has been helpful. And I hope you find ways to make your learning successful. And please let me know what you do. And, and if you participate in any of these events, if it's been a beneficial thing for you. The Facebook groups that share what uh, they do uh, afterward is also a good thing to have. So if you've never considered it, check it out. And there's Pastel Live. Uh, plein air live watercolor live there's a realism live that's the only one i haven't attended and um, all of them i've learned from so i just want to continue to grow as an artist and i hope that you will too so enjoy the rest of the video and the few pictures from last year's event and maybe it'll convince you to give it a try Until I taught my journaling class this summer at Wild Acres, I never really thought much about using stencils in my journals, but it was so helpful to lay these down, draw the lines in pencil, decide some positioning, and it really sped up my time. I have two different stencil packs that these are pulled from. They're very similar, but um, I'll include that in the show notes. And one of the things that I wanted was some continuity between one page and the next. And I decided to make uh, a headline or a banner for all of the artist names. So this is how I started it. In pencil, 
I didn't draw the line here. Whoops, that one didn't quite get that one straight. And I thought that's that's a little stiff. So I started it in pencil and then I got a black pen, a waterproof black pen. Turned it just slightly because you have this slight normal bend curve of your hand when you I'm right-handed. If you were left-handed, it'd be similar. So I just wanted to create that bend. Whoops, a little wiggly, sorry. I'm on a wobbly table today. And then instead of a straight line, I did a little wiggle and then connected it. And I wrote the artist's name. My first, like if it was me, I would write K-A-R-I-W-A-L-T-Z. Who didn't quite center that? And maybe I'm doing um, journaling. Capitalize that. Okay, so I get that all in pencil first, and then I decide if I want to keep the spacing the same. Or change it. Okay, so that makes oh, that looks a little better. So I let that dry, which does not take long. You get a kneaded eraser, but that gave me a nice heading for each person. And then I looked at what they were painting and some of the colors that they might use in their painting, and I tried to some of the colors that would look nice on the same page. 